One of the things I have my students do in my student success class is they do a goal setting worksheet. They set goals in regards to personal goals, academic goals, career goals, and then they work on this as a worksheet in groups and pairs in class, face-to-face -face class, and then they give it to me, I'll scan it, and next class I give it back to them, and then they can refer to that throughout the semester, including for their final vision project. Now, as we're online, I wanted to do it as a still worksheet for them to do, where they could then still work together in pairs and kind of discuss things. But doing it as a Word document where they're going to be filling in information, oftentimes it gets quite messy. Um, they don't quite know where to fill in information, or if you put in the little lines and they start typing, then it gets all a whack. So I've created a Word. And so how do you create a Word form? Well, Word form, first off, just to define it a little bit, is a form in Word where you can enter in information into certain spots, like I've already entered in information into this spot here and this spot here. So I have these blank areas where they can type in information, but they cannot edit any of this other area. So they can't edit to the document itself. They can only enter in to the fields that I've designated. Um, this is a locked down form. You can have unlocked forms where they can still fill in information into the fields and they can also edit other areas. But I like this as a locked down form where students can then um, fill in their information, save it, send it to me, keep a copy for themselves that, that they can then use in their peer group work and they can also use throughout the semester. You'll also notice that this one here, for example, has a date because they would drop down date one. Uh, this one here has a checkbox, okay? Um, and so there's lots of different options in regards to setting up a form. Now, in order to do this, I'm gonna show you with a blank document and then I'll show you how the settings, how this all put it together. So I'm gonna go in, I'm gonna choose a new document and I have a blank document here. Now, first thing, if you have not set up the developer tab in your Word, you'll need to do that. How do you do that? Well, in Microsoft Office, um, the latest version, that would be for Windows, you can click on File, and then you go to Customize Ribbon, and under the main tabs, you choose and you make sure the checkbox in the developer and you click OK. Now mine already has it in there. If you're using a Mac, uh, you would go up to, you open up Word, you click on Word at the top, you choose Preferences, and inside the Preferences, you can then choose uh, Ribbon and Toolbar, and then you're going to customize the ribbon and you click, click on main tabs and under there you're going to check off developer and save it. Okay, so once that's all done, you should have a developer tab at the top. So now what I'm going to do is I'm going to create my text that I want to designate and then I'm going to put in the form field. So this one, I just want a plain name. So I'm going to choose a text box. There's two types of text boxes. Uh, if I click on developer, you have all these buttons that are here. The two that I'm looking at here are rich text and plain text. To be honest, it's not a huge difference. My suggestion, use the rich text. So click on rich text. It's the first button there. And it comes up with a box here. Now, it has this default text. I usually leave it alone. If you really want to edit it, you just go into design mode. And then my suggestion for this is not to delete everything, but just to delete before the period. So everything before the period and then type in. That way it keeps it gray instead of changing it to all black, which gets confusing about where the form field is then. So I'm going to choose this. I can say, for example, enter your name. And so now if I click out of design mode, my box is now it says enter your name and they can click there and enter their name. So they'll know it's gray area. So they know it's a place where they enter their stuff. So. There you go, that's how you can do that. You can also label them as well too. Um, you can go into uh, your properties. So I have clicked on the box here and I click on properties and I can actually put in here, enter your name and I click okay. And you'll notice that it appears at the top here. So my box now, whenever I click in the box, it has both. It's up to you what you wanna do. I'm gonna click at the end here. I'm gonna put in a different one here and I'm going to choose um, maybe Let's just say what program are you in? So what program are you in? Probably a better way of putting that question, but that's all right. So now what I wanna do is I wanna choose different programs, okay? So with this particular one, I'll put a list of the main programs, but if it's not one of those programs, they should still have the option to be able to edit their own. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna choose this one that's called a combo box, which is the second button on the second row. 
and I am going to click on properties now that I have that and I'm going to add my drop down things. So I'm going to go in here and I am going to say uh, English and I'm going to add and I'm going to say performing arts and I'm going to say uh, business. I'll just put three for now and then I click OK. So now what happens is they can click on the item and choose one and it will automatically form filled in or they can actually just type in this box. So now if they wanted to put something else, if I wanted to put in nursing, I could just type in nursing. So combo box allows for text or drop down. It's just whatever you want to do. Now this is different than um, the drop down that where you cannot put in your own answer. So how long or what semester are you in? And I'm going to go in and I'm going to choose the third box, which is drop down. In fact, um, and now what I'm going to do is click my properties and do the same thing. And I'm going to say first, I'm not going to do all of these. I'm just going to give you a few options here. Okay. Now with this one, they can't type in, they can only choose the drop down. So there's two options there. And now let's just say I want them to post a picture of themselves. Um, post a picture of yourself. And I'm going to hit enter on this one because I want to make a bigger space here. And now what I do is I click on this third button here, which is picture. And now they can enter a picture. When they click on that, they get an option from file, from stock images, because Microsoft has a number of stock images available, online pictures through search of Bing, Flickr, or OneDrive, or from their icon collection. If they wanted to just choose a duck, for example, or something like that, they can click on that and they can choose, oh, let's just choose that. There we go. Got a goose here. All right. So they can do that if they want and they can post a picture of themselves. Okay. So there are a few options here for different things. You can also choose a, I had before, um, are you registered for this course? Maybe they're on wait list, for example. And I'm going to choose yes and no. But between these, I'm going to now put a checkbox. Let me click on this one, put a space here. And I'm going to put a space after this one. And here we go. OK, so now I have all of my different entries. So I'm going to clear out these boxes here. So I have all my basic thing here. So now I have my basic form. Let's just say I'm done with it. I'm happy with it. I want to lock it. So this is where we're going to restrict editing. So this button right here says restrict editing. And I'm going to check off this checkbox here. And I'm going to choose under my drop down filling in forms because I want them to fill in, but I don't want them to edit. So I'm going to start enforcing it. And I'm going to put in a password. Make sure you don't forget this. OK. And there we go. Now what happens is if anybody comes along, they cannot edit anything except the boxes that are available to them. So there we go. I have a blank document here. Now I can save this and send this off to someone. And if all the blank, don't fill in the form before you send it send it off as a blank form. When they fill it in and they hit save and send it back to you, you'll be able to see all of the edits that were done to that document. Uh, but if you actually have typed in any of these, so let's just say you chose second and now I save, they're going to have that already filled in. So make sure that if you've played around with it a little bit, you go back and you clear the functions that are all there. Okay, so this is the basic way of doing a form. You can then share it with students, they get a copy of it, they fill it in, they save it with their name. I ask them to put their name in the title. They send it back to me. I can then at that point use the same restrict editing, put in the password and I can now, so I'm going to take this, I'm going to actually say stop protection and I'm going to put in my password. And now what I'm going to do is I'm going to go to the review area and I can add my comments and things like that. So this way I can then provide comments back to them 
using my show my new comments that type of thing or even if I want to use track changes I can send it back to them so they can see um, my comments back on what they have so there you go that is how to create a word form and how you can then share it with your students and they can share it back